Hi, Sam from Crash Course Hemi here, and today we're going to be asking the question, what is Achille Morozzo's Imbracciura? First, let's look at the entomology of the word. The modern Italian word Imbracciura means to support or a harness of some kind like those used in rock climbing. Now, this is interesting as Imbracciura means to shoulder or strap or sling, sort of like a gige, which is the carrying strap on a shield that people are more familiar with. Couple this with the fact that the depiction of it in Morozzo is an almost shoulder height kite shield, presumably shaped object, plus Marco Dociolini's describes it, and I believe that Achille Morozzo's Imbracciuria is in fact a pavis. Why? Well, first we have to ask what is a pavis? A pavis is commonly uh, known to be a rectangular style shield originating in, but not confined to, Pavia, Italy. Uh, indeed, many depictions uh, and surviving artifacts are in fact from uh, Germanic lands. They took to it with relish, which is quite interesting. Now, it came in two distinct types. Type A, a large individually portable mantlet or a wall to protect uh, archers and gunners, uh, as well as advance under cover. And it was frequently uh, shoulder height or greater. And... The type B, a smaller version used more like a regular shield. Now, a few things that immediately jump out about the first type. Due to its size, as mentioned earlier, the wall variety uh, had to be carried by a shoulder strap, so that ties back into the entomology of the word, and it frequently had a special lower handle to assist in carrying it. This isn't too dissimilar to modern police ride shield setups. Next, it often would have some sort of supporting spike or pole that could be used to secure it in a more or less upright or slightly sloped position into the ground. As can be seen from the previous examples, they were also prime candidates for artists to embellish, often with uh, the Pavisa's city of origin. However, take note of the upper grip. You'll notice that it's predominantly in a capital Y or a capital T style configuration. Now, onto the smaller pavise. While not technically the same, there is a smaller shield called the targa that is a similar rectangular form, sometimes square. I won't dwell too much on it, suffice to say that they were often constructed from similar materials in a similar way and were equally artistic and clever in design. However, the overall size and capital I style grip generally means that they were closer to being used like a buckler and often if you look in the manuals they are described following the use of a buckler and as a quick aside, it was often said by some of the masters that the targa, targa was invented and used by the Romans. This is of course not true, but it's a cool little insight into their sort of thought process about these sorts of things. Sam, that's great. You say. But they look nothing like the shield Morozzo shows. Plus, the pavis and targa clearly have vertical grips in both configurations. Morozzo's depiction doesn't show the grip. Now, this is true. However, here are some pictures that show what a most likely vertical gripped pavis in use. However, here is just one example of many that I'd like to draw your attention to as it best illustrates the point I'm about to make. As you can see here, we have two straps running horizontally across the, for lack of a better word, gutter of the pavis. Was this grip system used? Well, see for yourself. Note the gutter of the pavis can vary wildly from very shallow, such as on the smaller targa, barely a crease in some cases, to quite deep like we've just seen, often deep enough for an arm to rest in. 
But Sam, you say, those later period German and tournament parade examples. Well, how about some earlier depictions from Italy of Italian, what I've dubbed proto pavis How do we know that they're pavis? Check out the guy in the front. Remembering that a pavis is used often in the larger styles as a mobile wall. And in this one, notice the bottom how this configuration with a long shield can also be used. Speaking of use, have a look at this gladiator gravestone, I believe, or memorial. Slightly different setup, obviously, but it looks familiar, doesn't it? Uh, for more information on that, I'd recommend checking out Sparta, an anthology of swordsmanship, and Sparta 2 for more on that little tangent. Now, that strapping arrangement is very common across all periods. However, by Marozzo's time, the Renaissance, the ancient classical rebirth was in full swing. As such, many hearken back to ancient Rome or Greece for both inspiration and justification. Everything old was indeed new again, and the older, the better. A classic example of which is the often repeated vestigious quote that the Romans favoured the thrust because it was deadlier. Now that's a whole different topic, that's a whole different subject, and you can see a lot of videos I think Matt Easton has put out, as well as other people, uh, about you know the merits of cut versus thrust. But we're just going to quickly put that aside. Now this is interesting because this idea that the thrust is deadlier coincided with the formative stages of what would go on to become the rapier. A classic example, of course, is just go read a gripper and, you know, have a look at his pictures. By extension, as we have seen, this elongated angular form and its way of strapping and utilisation was, I suspect, most likely influenced by the Roman scutum. In turn, this means that both the pavis and imbraturia are developmentally more or less part of the same philosophy. Uh, to further reinforce this point, notice the general style of the time, or a particular style of time, called the Arma al Antica, sometimes called, in modern parlance, heroic armor, that the Imbraciuria wielder is wearing. So, in summary, whilst the Pavis doesn't on the surface seem to have any relation to the Imbraciuria, we have seen that the stereotypical style of Y, or capital Y and capital T grips associated with it, that is to say the pavise, doesn't exclude other style grips like the I grip or the double strap used elsewhere. So if I took the bottom grip of this one that we saw earlier with its carrying strap, added the I style grip of this one over a deeper gutter, with, we'd end up with a grip system that could function in both the vertical and horizontal styles. This is why I believe that Morozzo's Imbraciura is quintessentially a pavis, if not necessarily directly in form, certainly in function. Okay, thanks for hanging around. We've covered a lot. However, one question might still pop up, which is... Okay, Sam. So some types use a horizontal grip combo, and its elongated convex tier drop shape acts in a similar way to the pavis and its sort of gutter configuration. But what's with the big spike you said was for sticking in the ground? Doesn't that make it too awkward to use actively, plus put your foot in danger? At risk of making this short video any longer, I'll just say, say that there is indeed precedent for putting spikes on the punchy bit of a shield. And with that, I'll leave you with a sparring video from La Sala del Armi of Italy using reconstructed Imbraciura, as well as a link to the My Armory Pavis thread where I got most of these image references from. So until next time, see you later. Ah, I keep messing that up. Imbraciura. Imbra Chiatura, Imbraciatura, Imbracaccia. Ah, oh, I missed it up again. Ah, oh, lordy. 
Okay, like Sam, so like some tights used a horizontal grip combo and elongated convex T shape acts in a similar way to the pavis and its gutter, but okay. What's with the big spike? You said it was for sticking in the ground, but like it doesn't have make it too awkward to lose, plus you could like stamp your foot and stuff. Stitch! <laughs> Hey everybody, Sam from Crash Course Hammer here, and today we're going to be asking the question, what is Achille Barozzo's Imbracciara? La, la, however you pronounce it. <laughs> hey everyone, Sam Campbell from Crash Course Hammer here, and today we're going to be looking at the question, what is Achille Barozzo's Imbracciara? Ah, fuck! So I thought I'd try a different format today, just audio with some pictures, see how that works out, and I'm currently recording through a sock, because I don't have a filter. So, what is Achille Morozzo's Imbracciatura? I believe that's how... Oh, I'm butchering the Italian. Close enough, though. Imbracciatura. Ooh, that's, that's bad. I'll get better, I promise. We're just going to take it from the top. Often repeated Vegeta. <laughs> hey everyone, Sam from Crash Course Hemmer here, and today we're going to be looking at the question of what is Achille Barozzo's Imbracciatura? Well, first let's look at the entomology of the word. The modern Italian word Imbracca, so not cha, Imbracciatura, means to support or a sort of harness of some kind. Uh, sort of like those looked in, uh, used in rock climbing. Now, this is interesting because the entomology of imbracciura means, uh, generally speaking, to shoulder uh, or strap or sling, sort of like uh, a guige, uh, which is, of course, the carrying strap on a shield. Now, this would work very well with such a large uh, shield as depicted. Ooh, I promise I'll learn Italian eventually by Morozzo. I will also point out here that Morozzo is not the only person to mention the Imbracciuria, uh, but also Marco Docciolini describes it as well. Now, couple this with the fact that the uh, depiction of it in Morozzo is an almost shoulder height kite shield, plus Marco Doncellini description, we're just going to take it from the top.